Hello, this is my third miscellaneous video. Uh, in this one, I will be talking about uh, just some general cartridge uh, repair t techniques. Uh, some of these are, are basically just trying to get a, a sticky tape moving freely, uh, how a splice can somehow bind in here. Uh, and um, what normally will trigger this is that if you'll be playing a tape, and again, you're pulling on the tape and it sticks or it doesn't move too freely. Um, what you normally have to do, of course, is open up the tape and uh, take a screwdriver and just kind of exercise the tape so that it goes around like this and just see how the tape is moving. And if it looks pretty smooth, um, you know, it'll be working okay. If it's kind of tight, you may have to unsplice it, as I mentioned before, and unravel a couple times here and then re-splice it to, to loosen up the tension so it comes out a little easier. Um, what you may find while you're turning it though is you'll just suddenly see where the splice is. You'll see a little section of the foil and you'll see it kind of stick and what you'll notice is that the adhesive from the foil is binding to the adjacent tapes and it's keeping it from slipping between the tapes. And what that'll cause is that'll cause the tape to kind of get stuck and bind up and you'll start seeing a lump here forming and a little gap here and as you turn it it gets harder and harder to turn. Um, what you really need to do is you take your screwdriver near the splice, put it in between the section of foil, and move it up and down like this. Okay, just kind of move it back and forth on the sides of the foil so maybe you can break where it's binding. Um, <clears throat> then what you should do is just simply wind the tape all the way around <coughs> to where the foil comes out of the center, and um, chances are it'll probably be broken because that was causing the binding in the first place. Um, what I normally do with the foil on any tape when I get to it, and I'm not sure, is I, I, tend, I pull the tape out and I pull it like this, and I flex it to make sure that the splice doesn't break off, and then I'll kind of push up on, it, on the section here to make the foil come loose, and maybe pull on it and see if it's, if it's going to break. Um, if it's okay, then uh, what I'll do is I'll put a, uh, a mark on the bottom. Now this one indicates that the tape had broken and I did fix it. If I just have a single slash, you know, so it looks just like that, that means that the tape is actually played through without a break, and uh, it's pretty assumed that it won't break any further than that. And uh, that's basically what I do for when tapes get bound up like that. You may also find <coughs> that the lubricant throughout the whole tape has kind of gotten sticky or a little, a little binding from age. Uh, maybe it was sitting in a damp area. Uh, and you'll turn this and you'll see it kind of rigidly move like this. It'll kind of turn like this very, very rigidly. What you need to do again is just exercise the tape through the cartridge uh, until it gets unbounded. Starting from the center you'll see it loosen up and it come all the way to the outer edge. Okay, my next part of the video will be talking about uh, basically going in and using a, a capstan cleaner and a head cleaner. This is one that actually has both. Here you have the capstan cleaner, which is just an abrasive pad. And here you have the, um, the head cleaner, which is a sort of a tape with a mild abrasive on it, uh, but it's really not bad for the head. It doesn't scratch it at all. Um, but what I'm going to show you right now is the capstan cleaner. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to make one of these if you can't find them. I mean, you may never come across these. I seem to find them once in a while, but uh, you may never come across one and I can show you that you can take a regular tape cartridge such as the one I was just working on and convert it into a capstan cleaner and what you do is you just take out the pinch roller and you take out the foam and you take some of this abrasive pads that you can find at any uh, any dollar store or, or you know a cleaning section and I took a pad out and I cut a strip like this okay with a pair of scissors and I folded it into a little piece like this. And what I did is I then took the abrasive and I put it inside where the pinch roller was. And you can always go back to using this as a tape layer if you want because it doesn't really damage the cartridge. Um, then what I do is I take the top and I close it up like this. Uh, try to get it in there. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, there we go, like that, and like that. 
and there I have now a, formerly a tape is now a tape capstan cleaner. And what I'll do next is I take some paper towel and uh, I will cut it into a strip and I will fold it over into, into a strip like this, maybe a couple folds, maybe three folds. And uh, what I'll do then is I'll dab it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, such as this. And I'll just kind of dab it like that. Okay, like that. And what I'll do next is I'll take the the uh, paper towel and I'll just kind of wrap it in front of and over the, the head. Now this one's been used before. It normally would be clean, but um, what you do is you take this and then you take a tape player such as this and you just simply put it inside the tape and you let it run with the, with the uh, paper towel over it. And what it's doing right now is the cap stain is rubbing up against the paper towel that's saturated in rubbing alcohol and it cleans off the dirt. Okay? And then you can put it in just with the abrasive like this. Maybe that'll work off some of the abrasive on the uh, on the cap stain. Get off some of the goo on there. Okay? Then you take that paper towel and you just move it to a, a drier section of the paper towel and put it in again like this. Okay, and that'll dry the cap stand. So when you put a tape in there, uh, it'll be dry and safe to use. Okay. And that's pretty much that for the tapes. Now I'm going to talk to you about is the tape players themselves. Here I have a, uh, a tape player, a small single standalone tape player. Looks like this. Okay. And um, what I'm going to show you first is how to clean uh, the pinch or the uh, cap stand. First, you have to get to it. Now, there's, some of them are easier to get to and some are hard. This one, fortunately, just had a, a mounting bracket on top like this that held it on with three screws, and I just pulled it off. And what I do is I just lift out the cap stand like this. Okay, lift it out like this. Okay. Um, always watch out for the little washers out of here. There's always one here or it's underneath. Make sure those don't fall off. Okay, then what you do is you take your paper towel and you take a little bit of Brasso. Okay, this is Brasso. Any metal polish knocks on Brasso. Uh, dab it onto the uh, paper towel. Okay, and there you have some on there. And take your cap stand and if it's dirty, you take this and just simply squeeze it and turn it back and forth and clean off all the crud from the years of tapes that have been played on this. And keep going until you get it all off and you'll see where you get some dirt. And then just uh, use a dry section and wipe off the polish. Okay? And then put it back in. Use a little bit of lubricant, such as this quick lube, uh, Vaseline you could use, any kind of grease, uh, and also uh, look for the chart changing mechanism. Here you have a, in this one, you have a solenoid, okay, which is uh, right about here, okay, and this little thing kicks back and forth and moves the, the tape, and it's kind of difficult to move it without the tape. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can do this with this. Okay. Okay. There's the tape moving on this. See, I've got the solenoid going back and forth under here. And what that does is it turns a little a little cog wheel here, which raises and lowers the head. You can see that down here, this little head here. And that kind of moves back and forth. Uh, in fact, uh, I might be able to do it this way. See, here it goes, like there. Let's see if I can do that again. Like that, see? It goes back and forth, moves the head. What I normally will do is I'll take a little bit of oil and then I'll take a little bit of the lubricant and just lubricate all the parts on there and to make sure that it moves freely. Okay. Now I'll show you how to clean the head. Now sometimes you can get these extended Q-tips which work well. Uh, if you don't have those, uh, you can use these hemostats, okay, which are like clamps. And what you do is you take yourself a, a wadded up cotton ball or paper towel and just kind of wad it up and, and kind of squeeze it in like this and then dip the head 
make sure you don't get the metal on the head definitely push it enough clearance here and you can use that as such to clean the head like this if you can't get in there um, and also the sensing uh, device there now what I'll do is I'll just take some Brasso okay again use Brasso and uh, let's see get a little on the uh, tip now for me I've opened this up so it's a little easier for me to get to if you can't it's a little more difficult but then take some Brasso in fact let me do it that way just to show take a little Brasso get it on the head on the Q-tip and then just go in here and just start polishing the head with it. And go back and forth like that. Okay, just use some Brasso and wipe the heads like this and get all the goo off and go back and forth. I'm trying to do this by looking in the camera lens here. Um, okay, back and forth and you'll see you got pretty much a lot of crud on there. I'm going to take a little look at this myself close up and uh, go in there again and uh, kind of get the goo off. Okay, and then use a little bit of rubbing alcohol afterwards to get the brasso off. Okay, and then you can tell after a while when you get all the junk off, and I kind of this one I can actually stick my finger into the head and uh, wipe it off with a paper towel but uh, what you'll notice is the head is a lot shinier now see the Barrasso really did a great job polishing it up and then I take it as well Barrasso again and this time I'm going to work on the sensing foil head uh, electrodes get a little Barrasso on there okay and here you see the sensing foil devices and again you want to kind of go up and down on them like this Kind of move it up and down and take the brasso and just polish these these electro heads off electrode heads up and just kind of work it up and down and then you'll see actually the metal will polish up really nicely it'll take off that kind of that dull film that can also make it less uh, slippery but because when you polish it up it'll be a lot more slippery and a lot more healthy for your tapes uh, and less wear on them as well and so I go in there and again, with this tape, I can actually get my finger in there and I'll just push my hand up there and kind of polish off the rest, like so. All right, let's see how that looks. There you go. And so now the electrodes here, you can see, are pretty shiny too, and so are the heads. So, in that way, then you take a little rubbing alcohol and you, uh, you just kind of remove any of the residual Brasso and um, you've got yourself a nice client shiny uh, clean tape player. Last thing you want to do is use a demagnetizer. Demagnetizer takes off the magnetic field on the head and this one actually plugs in. There's some that are actually built like 8-track cartridges but this one happens to be a standalone with a long wand. You need one with a long wand to get back there and the way you operate it is they come with instructions but you want to put the wand up near the head then push the button, turn it on, move it around a couple, a couple seconds, not too long, then do it over the uh, sensing electrodes, and then finally over the uh, cap stand. Just move it back and forth. And do not turn off the demagnetizer while it is in the tape layer or you'll magnetize them. Then you must slowly pull it out like this, okay, until it's about a foot away, and then turn it off. And that's all you got to do. And you do that every, you know, five, six hours or so, depending on how often you play it. And that's it. And I hope you have a lot of success with this, and I hope it helps you with uh, keeping your player and your tape working well. Thank you.